Holy crap, this is cool. I had no idea this was on here. I am really drunk. This one's labeled red, it must be important. Game over, that's a disappointment. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know what? I'm doing pretty great today too. Because as a follow-up to the previous Macintosh 2CI tech misadventures, I would like to explore what is actually on this hard drive that's connected to it because it has been years since I've actually got this computer up and running. And if you have not seen that previous episode, please do that first because now we're going to explore the insides of the disc. Okay, so um, time to boot it up. Hopefully it works. Sometimes it's a little fidgety. All right, so it's hopefully starting up now. By fidgety, I mean it does a few things. One, the 2CI just likes to turn on by itself when it's plugged in. Very rarely does pressing the power button actually do anything. Two, when I shut down the 2CI, it doesn't shut down all the way. It tries to turn off, but then the power light, which is kind of hidden right now, just rapidly flashes, and the fan on the back doesn't stop spinning. It'll spin down, then spin up a little bit, then spin down, then spin up a little bit, and it'll just keep going until I yank the power cord. So I think the PSU is starting to be a little wonky. See, and right now it's not even turning on all the way. One moment. Okay, so no joke, I leave for a little bit, let it juice up, and it just magically turns back on. I didn't even press a button. For fun, let's just crash it. There we go. All right, now the fun part trying to get it to boot off the external drive, because sometimes it's really touchy with how you power on the disk and the computer at the same time, so we're gonna see what we can do. Power on SCSI, reboot to CI. And there we go. Welcome to Macintosh, ConnectX RAM, st RAM doubler installed. Um, oh, the color is on. Sometimes when I reboot this, I lose all the color. But yeah, this is back when download more RAM was like actually a thing. You could like install a piece of software that doubled your RAM. I don't know how, it just does. <laughs> and I've also adjusted the monitor from the previous episode. So now those beautiful iconic rounded corners are fully included in the nostalgic experience. And here we go, here's our launcher. We got our window shade, our desktop, and our menu bar. Now, unfortunately, the speaker doesn't seem to work anymore. I tried turning the sound on and, you know, absolutely nothing happens. Control panels, go to sound. I do like how responsive this screen is. Like, I do get a 60 hertz experience with it. I mean, <laughs> obviously, this is a newer screen, so that should just work. But the fact that it works with a 1989 computer just fine, that's great. But yeah, sound is turned up all the way, and I got nothing, so... Um, you know, maybe the headphone jack works. I haven't tested that in forever, but maybe it does. Hmm. So I plugged some Sennheiser headphones in and let's just see if we can get any sound. If we can't, it's not the end of the world. It's just the end of my world. To be honest, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> That's something. Yeah, I'm getting nothing. So I don't think uh, sound's gonna work on this bad boy. Yes, I do have the launcher customized here. I do have the Apple menu customized from a long time ago. I have my applications here, my control panels here, documents here, other shortcuts here, and the whole hard drive here, just so we can browse everything just from the menu. Let's see what kind of programs are on here, and what kind of documents and files remain on this disk from long ago. And as a reminder, I was not the original owner. I believe this computer and the hard drive inside of this thing belonged to a school at one time, so, you know, public library or something, who knows, a whole bunch of kids' files could, or uh, teenagers' files could be on here, like Civil War Report or some bullshit. Let's have a look. And boom, magical change. I switched to a different display to try to reduce some of the moray pattern. I'm also picking up a 67 hertz refresh rate from the computer. I don't know if that's because of the converting I'm doing for the video or what. That is very odd, so. Had to adjust some things to make that work, but we're all good and magical now. In a way, you know, you could like put this launcher down here and make it like the dock. Oh yeah, now it looks like Mac OS X. Oh, yes, so much so. Do I have other things in here? Oh, I do, oh, I have a shutdown button. How convenient, I'm not gonna press that because the computer's never gonna turn back on again. All right, let's explore. Movie player. Yeah, um, that's what it was called back then. It was powered by QuickTime, but I guess the program was just called Movie Player. I actually have uh, some samples on the hard disk. I just gotta, man, there's a lot of stuff on here. Youth Crime, oh, that sounds fascinating. QuickTime logo movie, here we go. Let's check out the frame rate. 
performance of this machine. However, this movie, I think, plays just fine at a beautiful, what, 12 FPS or so? Probably less than that. <laughs> but that's what we had. Quick time. There you go. And I would actually like to get this working with Adobe Premiere 1. I don't know how the performance is going to be, but I should be able to install Premiere 1.0 on here eventually. And uh, it's driven by QuickTime, and QuickTime is on here, so maybe it'll work. Ooh, Tetris. Does Tetris work? Booyah, we got Tetris. High score was 6,067. Hold down the space bar and just lose. There you go. Game over. That's a disappointment. Oh, hang on. I got to... Get my trusty keyboard over here. Oh crap, the cord's not long enough. I'm gonna lose at Tetris. I think it's like JK or... Okay, K is rotate. Oh, okay. Alright, All right. I'm trying to get my bearings of the controls here. Let's let's start over. Let's do that again now that I have the controls. It's JK, L, and space. Okay. I didn't mean to do... It. Frick, I am so not used to these controls. Oh, Kid Pick Studio. We're gonna make some magic. Hey, wow, it works. Well, too bad I don't have the sound, because I'm sure there would have been, like, a whoop there or something. Come on, I clicked it. Let me, let me, let me play it. Come on, man. Yeah. Dude, surprise me. Oh, it gave me a very rainbowy looking circle. Oh, let's just make a giant eyeball. Oh, that's not freaky at all. No way, sir. What's under our goodies menu? Oh, they have little icons in here. Pick a movie. Uh, let's see. Can we load a movie file in here? Oh. Oh! Okay. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I... I don't remember seeing these before. <laughs> I am really drunk. This one's labeled red. It must be important. I am really drunk. What? I don't remember seeing these before, and if I did, I don't remember ever transferring them to this disc. Well, let's see what's in here. I am sorry, person who probably recorded themselves back in the 90s on this computer, or on this hard disc, but you're about to be on a Crazy Ken episode. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at that. What is this, Cinepack or Road Pizza? I don't know what kind of video format we're working with here, but we're getting incredible performance. All right, um, I can't seem to abort this. That's bad. Let's just force quit. <laughs> oh, spare us. Oh, it just force quit that one part of the program, not the whole thing. All right, very smart. All right, let's just Command Q all together. All right, I want to find that file. I want to see what other movie files we have. And those are actually some movie files I'll be able to use when I test out Premiere. I guess they're already on here, right? Might as well use them. Uh, let's just search drunk. Not drunk with a slash, but just drunk. I am drunk. I am really drunk. Okay, let's open up the movies folder. Uh, I just love the click of the old Macintosh mouse, huh? You, Yeah, you like that? I like it. Uh, I just opened up more things. Oh my gosh, I have a Nubis mounter on here. And Microsoft Office 98? What? Wow, PowerPoint. Wow. I'm just finding more stuff as I go. Picture one, this is probably like a screenshot. Hang on, let's take a look. This was a screenshot I must have done. Let's see. Probably. Oh, nice scrolling. Oh, just hands-free. Just going at it. Disk management programs? Usually mounter has to do with disks. Okay, well, yeah, this must be some kind of disk utility. Oh, hello, Inuit PowerPoint. I think, I think this was a PowerPoint presentation I did back in my, oh, oh, now that's just sad. Well, I may have to get this file off of here and try it on a different computer. Apparently we need a PowerPC processor to open up this version of PowerPoint, but yeah, this was an old, uh, presentation I did for, probably for my like Greek mythology class probably back in sixth sixth grade I kid you not I walked into the class with a floppy disk and put it in the PC that's what I did and I presented it went over pretty well anyway sky and title let's see what's on here it looks like people were making movies oh yeah they were having some fun with video echo it looks like right there and there's a sky hence the title uh, so we got that going for us look at all that noise and dithering hey we got somebody Cool. I like the fact that there's old movies on here. It's like we're coming across some, like, ancient treasures. We're, like, on a little treasure hunt. That's what it's like exploring a hard drive, you know? The first broadcast, studio and camera. I'm very curious about what all of this is. Also, while that's low... Whoa! This looks like a real studio. This, that looks like the Fox logo. 
Holy crap, this is cool. I had no idea this was on here. The people who were using this computer must have been like filming at a studio or like they were, this must have been for like a broadcasting class or something. Oh look, it's the set of Wayne's World. Just kidding. Let's try one more, Vince's main forecast. I'm guessing this is like weather for tonight. Hi, 87. This, yeah, this computer, I don't know if this computer was used at Fox or if the, or the hard drive, I should say, in the computer at the time was used at Fox or if this was like a, a class studying broadcasting. Oh my gosh, man. Uh, it looks like a real studio to me. Um, I don't want to get like too overly detective-y, but that looks like Milwaukee. Cool, well this is really, that was a cool discovery. Let's close that, because we gotta give some time to the other programs. I was gonna experiment in Office, but nope. I guess that needs PowerPC and we don't got that. Mm, so sad. Applications, what else we got on here? I know we got MacWrite 2, let's open this bad boy up. We could probably just start multitasking. We can open up more than one thing at a time, right? We have a, we have a multitasking menu over here where we could, oh, we actually do have some other apps running. We could switch to the movie player. We can hide the movie player, we can hide other applications, show all applications, you know, kind of like what we have today on Mac OS, actually. Pretty sweet. So yeah, this was Mac Right 2, with a spell check built in. Sweet. Stationary templates, let's do it. I like it. The duck swims on the lake. The duck may swim on the lake, but my daddy owns the lake. <laughs> Quasi obscure live action film references. How much fun. Okay, let's get out of that. Command N for no. Don't know if you knew that, but that's a nice little shortcut for some of those things there. Command N for no. Hypercard. Hypercard, I believe, was used for building like interactive multimedia apps. I think that's what it was. Yeah, wow. Holy crap. E? E? What is this, mini me? Eee! Whoa! This is a, um, this is clearly like a human body thing. This must have been like a student project. Oh, compact stack, delete stack, sweet. Uh, yeah, how do we get out of this? <laughs> like, abort. I don't want to quit hypercard. Dude, wow. Hypercard 2.2, 87 to 93. Oh, well, I don't know where your hypercard tour is, but I have your family memories. How do you like that? You can add your own buttons to this card. Well, congratulations. And, okay. Icon. Background. Oh, I can change this or something? Oh shit, I can. Okay. Um, crazy Ken. Now how do I get out of here? Hey, there we go, man. This is good. That's all I need. That's pretty. All right, that's enough hypercarding for now. What shall we do? A spreadsheet? That sounds exciting. Stationary, none. I love it. Let's build a spreadsheet. Okay, here's my budget. Well, hey, what? We have $2,500. And we spend $500. How do we calculate this? We can do the sum of A1 minus A2 and get 2,000. I didn't know that would actually work. I'm impressed with myself. So let's say we spend uh, $2,510. We now have negative $10 left in our budget, and you're fired. Command N. Boop. No. Let's see what got left on the notepad. <laughs> oh, note, upgrade to Mac OS X. I think I'm a little late. Sound edit. Now that is something I have not seen in a year and a half plus forever. Let's see what we got. Oh, Macromedia, holy ball sack. They don't even exist anymore, Adobe bought them. Oh, little dog loading cursor, that's that's pretty. Now, uh, I don't have working speakers, uh, the headphone jack doesn't work, I don't have a microphone hooked up, I'm probably not gonna be able to do much with a sound application. <laughs> oh, that's cool, let's do Slate, whatever it's called, bars and tone, that's usually at a thousand hertz for sine wave. Let's generate that. Boy, it would be great if we could hear it. Imagine, if you will, that this is a one kilohertz sine wave playing. <laughs> that is what that would be. We just don't have a way to actually hear it right now, unfortunately. That looks good. You know, let's do a slow one. Yeah. Oh, you have control points even. Yo, that's what I'm talking about. That's my jam. Chime when done. Yeah, if only we could hear it. <laughs> 
good times. So now it should like taper. Yeah, wow, look at that. Uh, my hot new mixtape is now done, guys. Get ready to listen to this, biatch. Okay, I see what kind of spectrum it's doing. So I don't see a ruler here, but frequency is this way, time is this way, and then the hotter or pinker the sound or the space is, the louder it is, so that's amplitude. There's a lot of cool shit in here, man. Watch it paint. <laughs> Photoshop. Now, if I remember correctly, I did a demo of this a long time ago, and it was uh, like a beta copy. This looks really primitive, yeah. I'm guessing this is like beta 0.63 or something. 0.63. October 2nd or February 10th, depending on where you are, I guess, 1988. Holy crap. That is something. Open as, interesting. Let's open. I think I have some Photoshop documents on here. Oh, car. Yeah, there's car. I thought I had that on the desktop earlier. I thought I saw a file for car here. I guess I guess it got moved. Sweet. Let's uh, let's try to find a different file. Ooh, Red John from The Mentalist. I love that. F uh, I almost said film. It was a TV show. I think I painted this a long time ago. Oh yeah, there's a beautiful bloody smiley face. So let's try to do some stuff. <laughs> See, filter. Oh, blur, Gaussian blur. Wow, dude. Star lens. Can we like change colors or something? Blend. Oh wow, blend modes. They were called cal under the calculate menu, I guess earlier. Oh, hue and saturation. Now, if I remember correctly, this is really fun. When you adjust the stuff, it'll actually adjust everything in the interface until you hit preview. Then it will just adjust inside the canvas. I guess that's just because of the com the computational power. It was quicker to calculate everything on the screen as opposed to just inside the canvas. Yeah, that's that's wicked. Save as. Let's see what kind of formats do we have. We have Photoshop and Picked File, Pixar, Picked Resource, Mac Paint, Raw, Riff, Tiff. I don't know what a Riff file is, but a Tiff. Yeah, I, remember, I know Tiff. This must have been like a school report, like a journal or something. <laughs> it looks like it's loading. Dear Mother and Dad and Craig. <laughs> what? And Craig is that like the second father? <laughs> oh, muffins. Yeah, muffins. It's capitalized, so you know it's important. Let me make this bigger for y'all. I have never read this stuff. This is all new to me as well. That was too freaking big. Let's go down a little bit. Let's just scroll to a random part of this story. One of the German moms said that one never does a craft at German birthday parties. Although, spelt wrong, we did a we did at Timo's. Thought it was a good idea when all seven kids decorated party hats patterned after McDonald's variety. This is hmm. That's great. I, we need to find out who Cray is. He's in danger. Exams. Oh, this has got to be a school thing. Oh, yeah. The secret menu's there. Cool. I just wanted to do that quick. About this Macintosh. See that, right? If you hold down the option key and press it, it's about the finder, and you still get the mountain scene. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The world since 1945. Europe. I feel like Bill Wirtz should be reading this or something. This is probably a Bill Wirtz script, like, from a long time ago. <laughs> The history of the world since 1945. It was beautiful until there were some bombs. I totally forgot you can actually adjust like fonts and everything for views in the finder. You can also make these icons like ridiculously huge or really, really, really tiny. I like, like right in between. Yeah, uh, let's just crank that font size up. Let's see how ridiculous this looks. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's just a little big. Times? Oh, that just. Oh my gosh, I didn't, I honestly did not know you could change, <laughs> like, the the label styles in the finder like this. This is a very, like, unrealist, oh my gosh. This is very Greek looking now. Yeah, let's go back to, what was it even on? Geneva, I think, is the default font, and size 9. Well, that was a lot of fun. Now, I'm going to show you what happens when I shut this thing down, because this is where it gets a little weird. If it does it, I'm gonna shut it down here. And it doesn't always shut down all the way. You'll have to listen kind of carefully. I'm gonna turn off the SCSI disc. And I don't know if you can hear this faint sound coming from the back, but I can see it and feel it. Like the fan's not shutting down all the way. And the light on the front is kind of spazzing out. And it refuses to turn back on. So typically I have to plug it in and let it sit for like five to ten minutes and then it'll 
then it just turns back on just fine by itself, actually. So, yeah, I'm willing to bet bad PSU. But it could be anything on the motherboard, honestly. Oh, now it's turning back on. Hooray! I was lucky that time. It usually does not respond that quickly. And as you can see, we lost color now. So sometimes some of the settings get wiped out. But yeah, I'm calling this a win. If you guys have any other stories about these old Macs you want to share, I totally want to hear them. I love learning about the history some more and just hearing what you guys have to say. But also, if you know of any other classic Mac programs or maybe obscure Mac programs you want me to try, send a comment my way because I want to install more software. I love it, so I'm totally open to your suggestions. Thanks for sticking with me. Catch the crazy and pass it on.